What made you become an acupuncturist? What is your marketing strategy? What is a daily habit that you do that contributes to your success? What is your opinion on niching? Hello. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Balance Within. You want me to just show you around? Yes, please. Hey, okay, come on in. Reception area over here. Typically our rooms look like this. I'm gonna take you through a few other rooms through here. So we try to keep it, you know, fairly clean, comfortable, neutral colors, not too much clutter. This is a smaller room over here. If we need to take blood pressure or uh, check temperature, we have those on the walls up there. And walking over this way, these are where practitioners generally sit, do some work, they're charting. We have a small herbal pharmacy there. We do also offer chiropractic treatment. So this is where the chiropractor does his adjustments. And we're gonna walk right behind you the other way, turning over here. This is another room through here. Again, our, our style has really been to just keep the, the colors very neutral. Try not to trigger any intense emotions. And last room is over. Cool. Hope you enjoyed that. Come back next time. <laughs> Tell me more about your practice. Been in practice going on 13 years in the San Fernando Valley. When I started out, it was just me. As time goes on, the practice grew. And now we're a team of eight of us and we all work together. What made you become an acupuncturist? To be able to help people mm -hmm. without using drugs without using pharmaceutical drugs. I always knew I wanted to do something with healthcare and this really just caught my attention. What kind of challenges have you faced? Once things begin to grow and you're doing things as you were doing them when you were smaller, the things you were doing before, you can't really do as it grows. Things have to shift. So whether it's mindset, whether it's the way you practice, whether it's running the practice a certain way, I think that's the biggest thing I've learned for sure. What would you say to acupuncturists that feel insecure? Fake it. Your patient is feeding off of your confidence. Mm -hmm. So even if you're not confident, even if you think you don't know what you're talking about, just fake it. You know the foundation of it. You just got out of school and you have your degree. Don't worry about it and you'll learn over the next decade of what works and what doesn't. In the last two years, what was one of your biggest win either with patients or in your practice going over 100 patients a week that was a pretty big win with with my actual treatment in my practice treating a patient who had cancer and seeing the benefits of acupuncture while she was going through western treatment it was pretty profound and just instilled more confidence in in what we actually do there were days where she would come in here and nausea and fatigue and anxiety and she would walk out a completely different person and be able to find the, that's the main thing is improving her quality of life as she's going through that whole thing. What is a daily habit that you do that contributes to your success? There are many. One of the things is positive mindset. Alyssa actually talks about that quite a bit, right? Yeah. Keeping a positive mindset, even though things may be rough one day or one week and your mind starts to take you in a certain direction, it's really about refocusing, looking at all the great things and gratitude for all those great things. So positive mindset plays a big role. Visualization plays a really big role. I have used that over the years. Closing my eyes and visualizing what it is that I want in detail to like the clothes that I'm wearing, to where I am, to what I'm doing, almost creating that scenario like it already exists. What is your marketing strategy? Quite a few different ones. We do a lot of online marketing, email marketing, word of mouth, networking and connecting with the different doctors in the area, networking and connecting with the different businesses in the area. If you look on the wall, there's a little um, think oh, of yeah. all the different business cards. Those are local yeah. businesses that I've connected with. Oh, great um, job. That know of me and I know of them. I don't think it's just one thing mm -hmm. that we do that really helps. It's multiple things that kind of 
get things moving. How do you balance personal and work life? I think for me was the biggest way of finding balance was learning how to say no. You work and you kind of make your own schedule and there are days that you're working and there are days that you have off. And sometimes a patient may say, oh, can I come in on this day when it's your day off? And you make an exception. You let everything go and you come in even on your day off because you want to see that patient. You don't want to lose them. You want to make sure you're giving them what they want. But over the years, you can't always do that. So learning how to say no and setting boundaries. If someone wants to start their own acupuncture practice, what do you think is the first thing that they should do? Establishing your good habits first. Making sure you're, you're in a rhythm with your exercise, your diet, your own meditation and, mm. and visualization. Get that set and don't let any, anyone or anything knock that off and build around that. What is your opinion on niching? Niching is one way to go. I don't niche. We have practitioners in the office that do all kinds of things. There is a way to be successful doing niching or not. I don't think there, there's just one way. What is your definition of being a successful acupuncturist? Ah, all right. <laughs> Success can be different to different people. My definition of a successful acupuncturist is really that you're just you're happy if you're doing what you're doing regardless of external factors if you are happy and you're enjoying it then that's pretty successful just making sure you're enjoying what you're doing is there any final advice that you would give to the acupuncturists, to our profession overall. After 13 years of practice, one advice that I would give acupuncturists just starting and our community of acupuncturists, we need to stick together more. We need to really function as a team rather than competitors. We'd be a lot stronger. I think we'd move a lot quicker in getting acupuncture out there. There's enough patients to go around and it's only growing. I love it. Cool. One big global acupuncture family. Yes. My question to you is you're doing all this work with and for acupuncturists. Why? What is your vision? Why are you helping acupuncturists become successful? Firstly, I truly, truly believe that acupuncture is a life-changing medicine. I have seen it help people and heal people in mind-blowing ways. I've experienced it, you know, I can't imagine my life without acupuncture. That was one of the things that initially started this whole mission, was just my experience with the healing and patients, knowing that more people need this medicine. Vision-wise, where we're going, it's really about wanting more and more practitioners to be successful and just to completely skip the struggle stage. Practitioners these days can come straight out of school and go straight to success, not spend one to two to five to 20 years struggling and, and a lot of times giving up. So my vision is to have more practitioners go straight to success. Then in turn, we're treating more, more and more and more patients around the globe. And so more and more people are exposed to the medicine, how absolutely life-changing it is. People understanding why to go to acupuncture just continues to spread more and more and more. So we then become a mainstream first choice for people to go to rather than like a last resort choice or never even knowing to come mm -hmm. to us. It's great to have this vision of what you want it to be, but do you see it actually happening? The probability of that happening, is that there? Yes. Um, would you encourage people who want to become acupuncturists to, to go to school? Yeah, and to fall into debt <laughs> and, and to become an acupuncturist. Yes. And one of the things that I actually spoke about one of my videos previously is if I went back to school again, how I would do it differently. And I would do it differently by taking more time to go through school, working more and taking out less loans so that you do get out of school with less loans because it is possible to do that. But even when you have the loans, it's still worth it if you get help because you can go from graduating to six figures your first year. You really can help practitioners do this over and over again, but you need the structures and the systems and how to communicate and stuff. Okay, what was the question again? <laughs> Do you see it actually going that direction yes. to where it's okay. growing? Yeah. Yes, I do see it going that direction too because of the demand for our medicine growing. And whether the patient realizes they're looking for us or not, the demand is there. Because so many more people are frustrated with Western medicine, not getting the results that they want or getting more sick. And people are seeking answers that we have, even if they don't know they're seeking us yet, they, they still are. Which is another reason why it's so important for us to understand how to communicate and get the word out there about our medicine so that the people that are looking for us can find us. Thank you, Alex, Thank for the you. time, Thank for showing you, us your office of and for this chat. Thanks it's been great and inspiring and informative. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs>